As the tech bubble finally burst open last year, we are seeing massive layoffs and outsourcing of these services to places which provide cheap labor and new AI tools that are changing the game for software developers. So this leaves us with the question, what is the future like? Whether you are worried about job security or somebody who's just observing these changes in the industry and mapping out your own new path, today I want to share where I feel the industry is headed and what we can do about this. Hey there, if you're new here, I'm Anadeep and I work as a software engineer by the day and make YouTube videos on this channel by the night. So if you guys find content like this interesting, please consider subscribing. As always, that means a lot. And I'm a big fan of upfront conclusions. I don't want you to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. Here's a quick takeaway for this video. Although software engineering industry might not look in the best shape right now, it has been better in previous years. I still think it's quite lucrative and will continue to be a lucrative field in the near future and the far future as well. Although the role of software engineers might change and even for the ones whose roles will not change, they will have a lot more to do. Yes, software engineer roles are evolving, but with the right mindset and with the willingness to learn new tools, with the willingness to embrace AI and, you know, sharpening some broad skills like critical thinking and problems solving. I think there are so many things that we can do that will keep us relevant and keep us in the industry. I'll go right into what's happening in the industry, why it matters and what you can do to make the best out of your time while you are, you know, working in here. Let's get started. We are seeing hiring freezes and layoffs in all of these big tech companies. Some of the biggest names in techs have, you know, announced layoffs and stuff. And there has been a lot of fear recently among developers. Personally, I've seen some of my friends being laid off and all of this can feel devastating, especially if you didn't see it coming, right? At the end of the day, these big tech companies want to maximize their profits and that is their only sole goal and they can do anything to do that. So what all this layoff vibe does is that it creates competition in the market because now the newer folks which are just out of college, which are just searching jobs and the older ones who were just laid off, all of those people are competing for the same number of roles and hence increased competition. Also, outsourcing is on the rise. Companies are increasingly going to cost-effective places, globalizing their operations to places like India and Mexico which provide cheap labor and good services. By the way, on a positive note, this globalization opens up opportunities for remote works because if you position yourself correctly, you can absolutely earn thousands of dollars if you are anywhere in the world writing code from you know absolutely anywhere in any time zone and stuff but the matter of the fact is this outsourcing stuff also increases competition for you and thirdly humans are not the only ones who's competing with you now there's this magic dude called ai and tools like ChatGPT and github copilot are taking over some of the coding tasks and to be honest they are accelerating productivity they are reducing the time it takes for us to go from zero to one and then from one to hundred so all in all this is good but on an individual level for the individual developer or the engineer who's working in one of these companies it can feel that there's a lack of stability but that doesn't mean that software engineering is dead or in fact any sort of engineering or any sort of job is dead whenever there is this you know this huge influx of new technology thousands of jobs are gone but a million more are created so i want to go over how ai is changing the landscape and what we can do about that i went over more than how ai is changing the landscape and what we can do about that in this video so i highly recommend you watch this first but if you've already done that or if you don't want to watch let's move forward So we see that AI has now become capable of doing the job of a junior engineer and now even a mid-level engineer as Mark Zuck says in one of his interviews. It is actually just a matter of time when it will be doing even more higher level stuff and the lines between a manager and an engineer will be blurred. This means that standing out is no more about just knowing a pro coding language, knowing a framework, knowing a software tool. It really has become a lot more about, you know, showcasing your unique skills and having a portfolio, thinking more about open source contributions, making personal projects and bigger projects. If you are still making the to-do list app, you will be extinct in the next two years. I talked about this in my previous video as well, but it is so important to not be swayed away by so many tools these AI tools, these AI agents that we have, but focus more on the problem solving and critical thinking skills that will enable us to use these tools and get to the final solution that we want to get to. But if you don't want to you know, continue on this path, there are still some subfields like cybersecurity and you know, large scale system design or even AI development itself, which presents a lot of opportunity, which 
will need engineers to work on to build the technology itself. So those are fields that you can pivot to. But yeah, now let's get to some of the main action items that you can take to stay ahead of the curve and stay relevant. And I say stay relevant, not in the sense that if you don't follow these steps, you'll be extinct. It's more in the sense that following these steps will give you an edge, will give you the peace of mind that you are in fact an integral part of the industry and not just another software engineer who can be easily replaced by AI. Well, again, I say replaced by AI, but it is more of you working with AI because a company will not easily hire you. You will have to show higher proficiency in whatever it is that you do. And then your knowledge combined with AI, that is something that the companies will be looking to leverage. But still, don't take me in the wrong way. AI is not going to eat up your job. It is just that you need to change your mindset on how you approach things. And all set. So with all that being said, let's focus on what we can do. Point number one, focusing on skills that AI can't replace easily, like deep system level thinking, architectural design, or complex problem solving. Instead of seeing AI as an enemy, try to embrace it, try to see it as your companion, something that you can use to get to solutions faster and better. Try to see it as a collaborator to make templates for code, research, or the paper, which have been made so many times to solve that same problem and then build on top of that. In fact, software engineering is just about this, you know, standing on the shoulder of the giants and then doing your own thing on top of that and not reinventing the wheel every single time. This will free up so much of your mental space to work on more creative stuff, on stuff that that you are more interested in on stuff that you find novel rather than as i've mentioned previously being stuck on the same boring defect point number two and this is very important you have to develop a personal brand this may sound cliche but it is more important than ever to have your presence on the internet or contributing to open source attending hackathons and you know staying active on social media to you know show your work that you have done all of these things will help you set apart. Personally, I have found a lot of value while staying active on YouTube and GitHub and even have my own portfolio section on my website. And I can absolutely show you so many instances when a recruiter was impressed by my portfolio or when a hiring manager actually read through my website, read through the projects that I did. And in my interviews, they asked me some deep questions about what I had done rather than, you know, me starting from scratch, like giving them cliche answers on what I had worked on. And that actually makes for an interesting conversation and that increases your chances of being hired. So all these things are actually really important. And this is actually 2025. I heard it like four or five years back that if you don't have a website, are you even there? And finally, my last advice that I'm trying to implement myself is to be a lifelong learner because the tech world evolves faster than other industries and it is now evolving faster than ever. So, you know guys, just stay curious. Experiment with new frameworks, new languages, and new techniques. Make it a habit to dedicate a few hours every week to, you know, learn something new, experiment on something new, and, you know, find your own way of solving problems. And even if you're not learning something new, just revisiting fundamentals can help you improve your critical thinking and problem solving skills because that is what will matter when you are using an AI agent to solve a particular problem. But yeah, the more adaptable you are, the more valuable you will be to your company, to society, to everybody in general, especially in this rapidly shifting job market. So remember, first principles before tools, understanding before frameworks, and problem solving before anything else. All right, guys, if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. As always, it means a lot. And if you have made it this far, I think you will also like this video in which I talk about all the skills that we can, you know, actually learn and master in this era of AI. And I have also started to implement them, learn them. And I think anybody who has mastery over these skills will benefit in whatever career they are in. Having said that, I hope you have a great day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.